Alright folks, welcome back. Level 14, The Escape from Hollywood. Let's see what happens. Okie doke. Now, first things first, we need to do some stuff here. This ends up being a very, very fighter heavy level, so it's going to be useful to have a gunship. This is something new I'm trying here. Since I just noticed as I was going through the airplane specs that the Belmoral here has two turrets. So we've got, let's remove those, we've got a 70 cal here, a 70 cal here, and a 70 cal here. That is three separate sets of dual 70 caliber cannons that can fire simultaneously. That's very good. On the other hand, the uh, bulk of our enemies in this level are Bloodhawks, so this may end up being a bad move, but we'll see. So let's see, we can fit a Mercury 6, okay, it still fits. Mercury 6 with Nitro, like that's going to help. Okay. And it uh, looks good. Okay, now we've got Hullabaloo. And how would he do? Next mission. Now we know the real reason for the race. Keep us here long enough for them to locate the Pandora. I'm afraid I underestimated Johnny. He's smarter than he looks. I tried to tell you, but do you listen to your old friend, Jack? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it, Chief. It'll give us a chance to rub Johnson's snotty nose in the Hollywood dust, too. We can't let you have all the fun. Johnny's sending in his big military zeppelin, the Gemini, to intercept us. Holy cats, look at the size of that thing! The Gemini will probably send fighters ahead to try and soften up the Pandora, so we need to protect her, especially her engines. When the Gemini moves in, we'll give her a dose of her own medicine by taking out some of her engines. The slower she's moving, the better the Pandora's chances. The Pandora can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a bruiser like the Gemini, so we'll have to even the odds a bit. A couple of well-placed rockets into her broadside cannon hatches is sure to set off some ammo magazines. Ah, just like Blake Zeppelin in Pacifica. That's right. Oh, be careful out there, fellas. I don't know what I would do with myself if anything happened to my old girl. Chin up, Spox. We'll give them the business, right, gang? Yeah! yeah. Right. Time to give them the business. Let's, do. Let's give them explosives all around. See here. Whoops, whoops, whoops. That's my plane. The Red Hot Spender is actually a very well designed plane. We are going to stick with that one on this. And we're going to give the howdy do. There we go. Okie doke. So, armor piercing, completely useless on this mission. We need high explosives to take out those hatches. And in fact, one of these needs to be flak so we can slow down the engines. Uh, okay, this is looking good. I wish this 30 caliber wasn't on here, but honestly, they weigh so little, it's not really too much of an issue. So let me see here. Wow, that's a lot of 70 caliber cannons. Let's see if this absurd amount of firepower is enough to offset uh, the incredibly slow speed and large surface area of the Belmoral. Let's give it a shot. So the key to this mission is screening the Pandora. The Gemini is a military Zeppelin. And as awesome as the Pandora is, it is not a military craft. Uh, it has no chance against something like that. And so the key here is we need to screen ourselves from uh, doing the same thing that we're going to try to do to the Gemini, which is destroy the engines to reduce their speed and maneuverability. As long as we maintain the maneuvering advantage here, we can engage the Gemini on our own terms. And that may seem silly, but it actually works in this level. As long as the engines are mostly intact on the Pandora, she will maneuver around uh, and uh, and put herself into better positions for firing. For there we go. Pandora. You heard him. Let's break them up and take them down. Keep those Kestrels away from the Pandora's engines. Watch that defensive fire! Sparks, any sign of the Gemini? Over. Negative, sir! Our spotter's lost her in the clouds! She's close, though! There's my baby. Oh, 
hope this works. Ooh. Warning! Second wave of enemy fighters are inbound from the north. Below you! Bandit at 12 o'clock low! On your right! Boogie at 3 o'clock low! Sorry, fellas, I'll have to bail out. This is Big John. Taking it. Over. Okay, Pandora's still in good shape. Holy cow, I just spotted the Gemini. Folks, she's coming in from the south and closing fast. In from the All right, fortune hunters. South Remember area. the plan. Texan Buck? You run fighter interference. Big John, you and Betty target the Gemini's engines. Maybe that will slow her down some and give the Pandora a fighting chance. And what about you and me, Captain? Jack, old buddy. We're gonna go for the broadside cannon hatches. Yeah! Now you're cooking with gas! When she opens her hatches to fire, we hit the cannons and... Well, you remember what happened to the Promised Land, don't you? Do I? Ha <laughs> ha! Thanks for keeping the fun jobs for us, Captain. The Gemini is launching more fighters. Good idea, sir. If we slow her down, that'll give us more time to help Pandora even the odds. Okay. I'll put a couple of flak rockets. There we go. No doubt about it. We're heading that Zeppelin boss and our speed has gone way down. Fire broadside cannons. Oh, the Gemini is in firing range. Man your fire stations. Prepare for broadside. This is the Pandora. We lost two of our engines to enemy fire. Speed is down 15%. This is the Pandora! The fighters are going for our engines! Stop them or else we won't be able to get out of here! Hey, hey, hey! Someone get this butcher off my back! Unfortunately, the Gemini is able to put up a blistering defense fire. They are covered with machine guns, and each time you hear that alarm, that is the broadside cannons are firing aerial torpedoes into the Pandora. She's about half as fast now. That should keep her away from the Pandora. Watch it! That's live fire! Okay. We're switching over to the high explosive rockets. Now we're going to try to fire our rockets into the broadside cannon hatches each time they fire. for another pass. There we go. Watch it! That's live fire! There's one. Bullseye! Okay. Great shot, boss! That's the way to do it, gang! One gas bag is gone! This is gonna take a little while, but what that does is it causes a sympathetic explosion, sets off the magazine, and burns up that entire gas bag. You do two or three of those, and that's the end of a zeppelin. Now, had these been hydrogen zeppelins, of course, this would be over awfully fast, but since they're helium, we've got to blow up the ammunition rather than the gas. There we go. Yeah! Chalk up the second gas bag for the chief. He's on a roll. Keep at it, fellas. Only one more cannon hatch to go and the Gemini will be deep-sixed. That's live fire! Well, the uh, Balmoral seems to be doing alright for themselves. For it itself. Unfortunately, the Pandora does not have aerial torpedoes, so there's not much that we can do. Okay. Hatches are the open. Gas bag is burning and that puppy is going down. Adios, Gemini! Mayday, Mayday, this is the Gemini. We are going down. Please send help! Good work, crew. Pandora, you are clear. We are returning to base. I feel a little bad. It was a good looking Zeppelin.
Well, that certainly could have been worse. I'm slowly in the process of selling off all our old planes so that we can put together new variants as we go along here. Okie doke. What are we got? Zachary gets last edit. So on the cutting room floor. Okay. Well, we defeat Hugh. Security is definitely dispatched by Johnny Johnson to blah 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 over the Pacific. They didn't really say where exactly this was, but uh, since we were off of Los Angeles, I'm going to guess that we were probably over the Channel Islands there, which would have been an interesting, uh, interesting locale had they decided to model the islands themselves. Let's see. Citizen volunteers, uh, like citizens auxiliary police, those guys are always fun. A spokesman for Mr. Johnson, so obviously Johnny Johnson has just removed himself entirely from this whole situation. Lana Cooper has started up her own studio, which is nice. Uh, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt the Fortune Hunters are going to contribute to the success of her operation there. Let me see. Zachary, get out of Hollywood. Stop. If you show your face in this town again, I will spare no effort or expense to wipe you out. Stop. Your luck cannot hold out forever, you pirate scum. Stop. Signed, Johnny Johnson. Welp, so much for that. Now, it seems like Johnny Johnson is forgetting that he actually works for Hughes... Well, we'll see if anything happens there. Anyway, not terribly impressive here. One Bloodhawk. The game does not uh, give you any credit for destroying cannon hatches or taking down entire zeppelins. So, it doesn't look all that impressive, but it is. And, once again, no money. So, there we go. That was a short mission, but it's one of those missions that either goes very well or very, very badly. So, that wasn't too bad. Uh, next mission is the last of the, uh, of the missions in the Hollywood area as we begin our trek across the country to the pirate haven of free Colorado. Tune in next time. Today's plane of the day is the F-16 Fighting Falcon. The F-16 is a single-engine, supersonic, multi-role tactical aircraft. The F-16 was designed to be a cost-effective combat workhorse that can perform various kinds of missions and maintain around-the-clock readiness. It is much smaller and lighter than its predecessors, but it uses advanced aerodynamics and avionics, including the first use of a fly-by-wire flight control system to achieve enhanced maneuver performance. Highly nimble, the F-16 can pull 9G maneuvers and can reach a maximum speed of over Mach 2. Designed as a lightweight daytime fighter, it evolved into a successful multi-role aircraft. Experience in the Vietnam War revealed the need for air superiority fighters and better air-to-air -air training for fighter pilots. Based on his experiences in the Korean War and as a fighter tactics instructor in the early 1960s, Colonel John Boyd and mathematician Thomas Christie developed the Energy Maneuverability Theory to model a fighter aircraft's performance in combat. Boyd's work called for a small, lightweight aircraft with an increased thrust-to-weight ratio. A 1965 Air Force study suggested equipping its squadrons with a mix of high- and low-cost fighters as being the most economical. The Fighting Falcon includes innovations such as a frameless bubble canopy for better visibility, side-mounted control sticks to ease control while under high G-forces, and reclined seat to reduce the effect of G-forces on the pilot. The F-16 has an internal M61 Vulcan cannon in the left wing route and has 11 hard points for mounting various missiles, bombs, and pods. It was also the first fighter aircraft purpose-built to sustain 9G turns. It has a thrust-to-weight ratio greater than 1, providing power to climb and accelerate vertically if necessary. The first YF-16 was rolled out on December 13, 1973, and its 90-minute long maiden first flight was made at Edwards Air Force Base, California on February 2, 1974. Its actual first flight occurred accidentally during a high-speed taxi test on January 20, 1974. While gathering speed, a roll control oscillation caused a fin of the portside wingtip mounted missile and then the starboard stabilizer to scrape the ground and the aircraft then began to veer off the runway. The test pilot decided to lift off to avoid wrecking the machine and safely landed it six minutes later. 
In the 1980s, the multinational staged improvement program was conducted to evolve new capabilities for the F-16, mitigate risks during technology development, and ensure its currency against a changing threat environment. The program upgraded the F-16 in three stages. Altogether, the process permitted quicker introduction of new capabilities at lower costs and with reduced risks compared to traditional standalone modernization programs. The F-16 has continued to be involved in other upgrade programs, including service life extension programs in the 2000s.